Hey folks, Alcris here. I wanted to put together a short video talking about training, what it is, what it's for, and where it comes from. So you can pull up the training page in the encyclopedia to follow along. Essentially, training is this red shield. Cities produce military units with training, so it's a key part of production. So if we go into a city, you can see here training in the production queue. This particular city is making 20 training and it's producing units. So every turn, that 100 training will increase by that 20 training. So in four years, that maceman will be produced. Unused training goes into the global stockpile. So the global stockpile is this up here. You can see I have 1376 in the global stockpile and I'm producing 520 a turn from the global stockpile. You can see it breaks it down which cities it comes from, which uh, characters it's coming from, upkeep. We'll go all over that all later. But for now, just need to remember, that's the global stockpile. Notion is, if a city isn't building unit, uh, like maybe a city is building a specialist, then the training that that city produces still goes into the global stockpile. It isn't wasted, it just goes into the global stockpile. So training can either be used for production of a particular unit, if it's a military unit that takes training, or go into the global stockpile. Um, and that's the case for all the production queues in the game. So the civics... Uh, production queues, either specialists or projects. If you're building that, the civics goes into that. Otherwise, it goes into the global stockpile. You can see here the tooltip shows you it's plus zero because it's not contributing to that global stockpile. And the same for growth. If you decide to build a worker, the city is not going to be growing. Uh, there, zero growth because uh, it's now building a worker instead. If I no longer build the worker, then the city's going towards building that additional citizen. All right. Uh, the global stockpile can be used to buy orders. So we see here, we've got this cool order button. If I click this, I can buy an order for 100 training. I can click it as many times as I want, no problem, uh, until I run out of orders in, in run out of training in my global stockpile, uh, but I bought a bunch of orders. That can be very useful uh, if you need to get one extra move in a critical military situation. Uh, so it's usually advisable to try to keep your global stockpile pretty high. Uh, I'll, I'll skip over promotions and upgrades for a second and just say you can stockpile a maximum of 2,000 training and that access is converted into orders. So if this goes over 2,000, it converts at that same rate 100 training uh, for one order. It's just as if you bought it. So in case you overflow, it just the game effectively buys the orders you would have bought for you uh, and then you have a couple extra orders. All right, uh, you can also conduct a forced march. So we've got our trusty axeman here. You can move quite a ways. Um, so you can move here, and you'll notice there's this little red shield here, uh, 58 order and then 100 red shield. So what that means is I can move here, but I'm going to have to force march, and that is going to take 100 training, and then every move is going to cost an additional order. So whereas moving from here uh, took, you can see, one order, two order, three order, 62, 61, 60, moving to here now will take 58, 56, 54, and to do that you just press force march, and then you can move here, and then here, and then here, and it's taking two orders for each of those moves. And it took that 100 training from that global stockpile. Assign generals. So returning to this cool axeman we've got here, if I want to assign a general, it also takes 100 training, and that again comes from the global stockpile. So if I pick here and want to assign this uh, ruler, or this, this unit as this, this character, as a general, um, it assigns that and takes under training and also places the unit on cooldown because the general's assigned. This unit can't move anymore. So if you're trying to exercise a move with a unit and you want to, maybe it's going a long distance, going to the front or something, you want to assign the general at the end of your move so that your unit is placed on cooldown after it's already done the move. Worth noting also um, that generals, I'll assign my leader here as a general, illustrate um, generals impact the unit uh, basically strength so you can see here essentially courage translates into attack since this is my leader she has six courage it tells you uh, as a general she's going to increase my attack um, she also increases my defense based on her charisma movement speed um, leader generals get one additional movement and then uh, wisdom translates into critical hit chance it's not related to training, but just a good thing to know about generals. Unit promotions and upgrades. So I could promote this unit. 
Normally, uh, units earn XP. You can see this XP bar here, level one. Uh, this is a higher level unit. You see it's level three. It's earned a lot more XP, so it's got these promotions here. You can earn these naturally through experience. So uh, here's a unit down here that has hit level two. So you see the, the bar under it, but it hasn't, um, it hasn't bought that promotion yet. So uh, once you do, I've spent I, I had earned the XP, so I'm not spending anything except for an order. It places the unit on cooldown, just like assigning a general. And you now have that promotion. If you don't want to worry about earning XP, maybe you particularly need to, need a promotion on a unit, or you're running up against the uh, training cap and don't really need the extra orders for anything, you can just buy the XP with training. So essentially, it's one-to-one. -one. one XP is bought for one training, so you can pick whatever promotion is on offer. Here, if I want to upgrade this, it... Uh, takes 70 training from the global stockpile again and gives the unit that combat promotion. Similar to assigning a general, it places the unit on cooldown, so if you want to promote, uh, you should do it at the end of your unit's movement turn. All right, upgrades. So this is an Axeman, but this is late in the game, so I've already unlocked the tech that goes beyond Axeman, Battle Line, which allows me to build Maceman. And Maceman would normally cost 150 iron and 100 training to build. Uh, so I could queue up a maceman here, and it would build in six years, because this city is 17.2 training a turn, and uh, mathing out, that works out to six years. However, I can also directly upgrade this unit by clicking Upgrade, and here, uh, essentially I'm paying double for the unit in that I already built this axeman, so the some city had to uh, build this, I had to pay the iron cost, and slowly produce the training. Um, but now that it's produced, I can upgrade it to maceman, um, but it costs that 100 training as if I had built it in a city and the same cost as if I had built it. So you're not getting any discount for upgrading a unit. But why would you ever want to do this? Sometimes it's nice if you're trying to do a timing attack. Um, let's say you've just unlocked sweet new maceman tech and it's early in the game and you want to attack your, unit, your enemy with a lot of macemen, but if you have to build them individually, it's going to take a long time. Uh, if you build axemen or even warriors ahead of time, uh, you can upgrade the maceman as soon as you get the tech, and then suddenly you have 10 macemen that just appeared out of nowhere. Yes, it's expensive, but having 10 macemen when your opponent did not expect you uh, to have 10 macemen because you only had 10 warriors a turn before and they don't necessarily know you just unlocked maceman tech, that can be very effective. All right, and we talked about stockpiling. So you can increase training by training miners, building barracks or ranges, and members of your court with high courage can also contribute to the global training stockpile. So you can see here, if we look at this, um, breaks down a little bit here that my leader is contributing 84 training, leader's courage. You can see here the six courage. Six courage here uh, translates into 84 because that's how courage scales um, for leaders. My king consort, uh, because he has negative courage, is actually draining from the stockpile. Then uh, my third in line, governor, um, she can. Uh, she has six training, so she's also contributing as a successor in that plus 42 because the line of succession, everyone contributes here. Uh, the prince also is contributing 180 training to the global stockpile. Um, he's also my uh, ambassador. And then there's a bunch of agents and other stuff. Courtiers also contribute. Basically anyone in this panel, when you're looking on the court members view, if they have courage, they're going to either positively contribute to the training stockpile or negatively. Okay, so if we look in a city, so let's take a look at Babylon, it's a little simpler. We see where does training come from? So we see here we've got uh, Babylon, or not Babylon, this city has eight base, it has three miners, it has an apprentice officer and a master officer, it has two barracks, and minus 32% for assimilation. Assimilation is essentially, uh, I just captured the city, it takes a while for that city to feel like it's part of my empire. We can safely ignore that for now. Um, it's only when you're conquering, and generally if you're conquering things, things are going well. Uh, but notice it does take a while uh, for that bonus to go, so as soon as you take a city from your opponent, you're not getting full value of that city for quite some time. Um, so maybe I'll actually pick a city of my own that's a little simpler here. Um, so this city produces 21 training. Uh, that way we don't need to worry about the simulation bonus. This city produces 21 training. It has eight base because every city, every city has uh, eight growth, eight civics, eight training, and one science a year just as base. Every city gets it, so you can always produce 
something in the city. Remember, the primary production queues are growth, training, and then civics, which is split into specialists and projects. So the cities basically have something to do, and then you get one science uh, as base. So continuing there to look at here, we can also look at it here, same tooltip. Uh, it's getting plus one from a miner. So there is a miner here uh, somewhere on, on this city. Here we see we are mining the luxury salt. So we've got a salt mine, which doesn't actually give me any base. Salt itself does not give you any training, but the miner, just by virtue of being a specialist, uh, gives you one training a year. So you can see miners give you one training a year and then increase the effect of the mine by 150 percent. Uh, the miners are rural specialists, um, and so they only give you one science a year as well. But basically, if you ever have some hills and some mines, um, you can uh, put a miner on there. Hills by themselves don't give you any training, only if they have ore, but the miner uh, will give you one. If you do happen to have ore in your city, uh, so if I go into this city here, um, or let me see if I can find a simpler city. So this one's simpler. This one has some mine and uh, a mine a mine with ore and a miner. And we can see that this city breaks down. Here we've got two for the miner because the miner is being magnified. Essentially, the, the, it's, it's 100, the miner gives you 100% of the output of mine or mine gives you two output in general. Um, so two, two training output, 150% of, so half of two is obviously one. Uh, so the miner gives you one and then it gives you an additional one. So the easy rule of thumb is a miner without ore gives you one. And then the hill, the mine by itself doesn't give you any. Uh, and a miner on an ore mine gives you two. And then the ore mine itself gives you two. But you may say, Algris, wait a second, this is 4.6. 4.6 is a little bit bigger than two. That is because my leader at this point in this game is a delver. Uh, it's one of the traits that they got. Very, very good trait. And as a leader, all mines and quarries give you 20% additional output. So that four uh, is increased by uh, 20%. So, and then the specialist itself double dips. So you can see here in the bottom right, the tooltip says mine 2.4 training plus 18. So that's two uh, and then 20% of two. And then the specialist double dips essentially it's 150% of that. So it's taking that as its base for the 150% multiplication. Uh, so that's where that comes from. All right, let's see what other things. Um, mine, and then this is also an assimilated city, so we can uh, not worry about that, but I conquered it earlier, so its assimilation is ticking down. Uh, it's ticked down a little further. All right, let's uh, look at another city and just sort of break it down. Here we've got a city uh, that's a little, little more complicated. We've got some barracks and ranges in the city. It's also a hunter city, and hunters are a military family, just like champions and riders. And hunters, champions, and riders all give you plus two training. In fact, the uh, Pedia page tells you that. Apologies, well, plus one training. Sorry, no, plus two training each. Um, so families that are champions, riders, or hunters uh, give you plus two training in each of their cities. It's very nice. And Rome, uh, as you may know, all their cities get an additional plus two training a year. Uh, so Roman cities are very, very nice. We can look over here at, uh, happen to be playing against Rome, and peek into their city, and we see they've got eight base, two from being a champion city, and then two from being Rome. It's also worth noting that the champion seat has an additional 25% just from being the champions uh, themselves. So uh, let's go back over here. We've got the city... You see that it's got eight base, two hunters, four elder officers. So it's got one elder officer that the max upgraded on officer that gives you four. And then it got bar has barracks and ranged. And I see it's 25.2. So how does that come out? Essentially, the math that's going on there is it's adding up all the base and then uh, multiplying it by the percentage. And uh, essentially adding that multiplied onto the percentage. So here's a really complicated city. My capital has a bunch of different things. Um, if we look at how this is calculated out, we see it's pretty straightforward. You basically add up all the bases, you add up all the percentages, and then you take the base and multiply it by the percentage and then add that back to the base, which gets you the total. You'll also notice here there's this plus 56 governor because uh, the governor has six 
training, so she herself is scaling the city's production. So we look here, she's got six. Um, so as a governor with six courage, she's giving 50%, 56% additional training to that city, which is significant uh, considering that's affecting the entire city base. Uh, but that is summed with the other percentages like the barracks and the ziggurat war shrine here, which comes from an event. Um, so very, very can be very powerful to have a very strong governor in one of your cities. All right, um, we talked about mines and ore, we talked about barracks and ranges, and then rally troops is the last thing to think about here. Uh, you can rally troops by clicking on your leader's portrait and then rallying troops scales with the number of cities that you have and the turn of the game it is. So early on, this is gonna be pretty weak and probably not worth the 100 civics, but later on in the game, it can be a significant way to boost your global training stockpile. Notice that that rally troops goes directly into the global stockpile. It doesn't go into a specific city's training. All right, well, I think that's all there is to cover, um, or at least the beginning of what there is to cover in 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 this, in this uh, about training in old world. Um, as you can see from this tooltip, there's a lot of complexity uh, in the game that sort of adds up together, but it, the fundamentals are pretty straightforward. And it, the biggest thing I think to take away is the more you can add into the base, uh, the better your percentage gains will be. So anything like uh, starting a military city or may, trying to put a military city where there's ore, anything to stack a lot of base things means that the percentage is going to be better, um, as well as getting specialists in place to raise that percentage raise that base so that you can impact with the percentage as well as identifying good governors uh, that can raise uh, your training and the, the game makes it pretty easy here so i can see that if i made my queen no longer a general and made her uh, the governor of this city then she would increase it by 7.8 training partly based on her courage um, so if i do that i can see now go on to the city and um, realize i did not assign the right person as governor I can go into the city and see now that I've got plus 56. So I went from whatever it was before, it was 25.2, and now it's never over here as well, 33 training um, for that city. All right, appreciate any comments or thoughts you have below or any other topics that you think would be worth covering with a quick instructional video. Have a great one.